Uh, so now what we're going to do is, now you've sort of opened the meeting. The meeting's been opened, you went over your contracts, you went over uh, the moral compass. Now it's time to actually move into the meat of the activity, which is the targets. The ones we chose for this training are two important ones. The first one being protect our planet. And Taryn's going to do a couple of activities around protecting our planet. And then the second one will be uh, treating people with dignity and respect. One of our major targets is protecting our planet. And tonight, we'll demonstrate um, a lesson uh, within that that will help us meet that target called Trim Your Trash. Uh, and so when I say a lesson, I mean that there are a number of different activities that you could do. And my recommendation is maybe even to, if you don't get a chance to do all of the activities, you could spread it over a couple of different um, sessions. And in fact, one of these activities um, would have to be uh, it's growing a reverse garden, so that would have to be done over a number of different sessions. Um, and so uh, I also was thinking that we could, if you learn to trim your trash and you're able to take what you've learned to the navigators, if the navigator is able to take what they learned in the meeting back home, and we, um, there's also sort of a test, or not a test, but a, a, what's your pollution quotient, if they're able to improve and trim more of their trash, um, then they can get a trash trimmer bag, badge. So that could be um, a good goal for Navigator would be to earn the trash trimmer badge. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate one of the activities uh, that you could do for the trash trimmer badge. Um, you've heard of the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. So this is four R's and a C. Uh, reduce. Actually, Lorraine, if you don't, wouldn't mind writer. to write that yeah. up, that'd be great. Reduce, reuse, recycle, reject, and compost. That's the C. So, um, so this game is designed to get us to, it's going to be fun, but it's also designed to get us to start thinking about trash and different things we can, different options that we have with trash. So if I could get everybody, you can leave your piece of paper on your chair and just maybe sit in a circle right here in the center. That would be awesome. Okay, and actually if we can get the circle, we can close the circle, that'll help. So everyone's in a circle and we have a, an old bottle, bottle, water bottle that somebody <coughs> had. And then we also have this bin here and the bin is full of trash items. Um, and the trash items are something that you can collect on a hike around the neighborhood with your navigators. So you can pick up some litter and then you can use it for the game. So this is, that makes this an outdoor activity and an indoor activity. So first you might collect, um, go on a hike or maybe you could do that the session before and collect your trash. And then um, you'll play this game. Uh, or if you are not able to collect trash, you could also draw tra some pictures of different trash items on pieces of paper or write them on pieces of paper. There are lots of different ways to adapt this activity if, for example, it's raining really hard or you're not able to go outside for whatever reason. Um, but I did collect some trash, so we'll use that. Um, okay, so we, we're using this to make a spinner, and I'm gonna put the bottle in the, in the middle of the circle and we will spin this, and whoever it points to, okay, Brenda um, is going to pick, uh, so now it's Brenda's turn to pick something out of our trash bin, and we'll just leave it here if Brenda wants to. So what's she gonna pick? Okay, so she has an aluminum can. You gotta think about how you can remove that item from the garbage by using one of the fours, uh, four R's or the C. Um, and the R means uh, reject would be not to throw it away, like not to get rid of it at all, not to buy it in the first place, actually. So, um, so think about the four R's in the C and um, which of those, uh, what, what could you do with that um, can? She's saying that she cannot compost it. And one thing she would do is make a different choice, reject actually that can by drinking water um, out of the faucet or something else. So you can hold on to that and now you can spin. Okay, okay, so you can take a piece of trash. Okay. 
Okay, she has a styrofoam plate. So there's these different options, reduce, reuse, recycle, reject, or compost. You would reject it? Okay, so you would make a choice not to use the plate. Yeah, because it's styrofoam. <coughs> does not know what to do with styrofoam. It can never, ever be, um, you know, turned into earth or anything. It just stays the way it is. That's right. So styrofoam does not biodegrade. Mm -hmm. So what other choice could you make besides styrofoam? You could use a real plate and wash it. That would probably be the very best thing. Excellent. Those are all great suggestions. So you can keep doing this until it's empty. And then also, if the person can't think of what to do with it, then it's opened up to the group. And everybody gets to make suggestions about what the person could do they could, and how they could um, not throw away. So, the, so at the end, there's no more trash in the trash can at all. We've turned the trash into something else. So that's one lesson that's also a game and fun, but also a learning activity. All right, thank you guys so much. You can head back to your seats. So there's an outdoor activity, a litter cleanup, um, and then there's a what's your pollution quotient. That's another activity within this lesson. And, um, and then, the, so there are three activities and even an alternate activity. If you don't like any of those activities, we'll provide an alternate activity so you can have a lot to choose from. So if you, the leader, uh, don't want to do you know, the, the first three suggested, you could also use another one. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next target, which is treating people with dignity and respect. And as Robin said in the beginning, a huge uh, point and important piece of the navigators is to uh, work on getting along with people that are different from you. So that's exactly what this target, uh, it's not so much a, a target, but uh, a point of the whole navigators program. So we're going to do about three to four, I'm going to need the participation about three to four activities that are going to be related to basically looking at people in, in the group and finding out what we have that's in common, what's different, and what's great about our differences. So if I could ask you to, if you don't mind sitting on the floor again, it was kind of comfortable there, right? We'll circle up. And I'd also want to point out, we're going to get a little bit more into behavior, uh, the managing your group later, but circling is a, it works real well. Um, be mindful when you're setting up your room uh, in the beginning of, and for meetings that, um, you know, you don't, if, if there's a long table, like, uh, you know, a long table in a room, you don't want people sitting sort of all the way down. This works much better. People can see each other, hear each other, and feel like they're part of the group. So always be mindful of where people are and positioned. So the first thing that we're going to do is, we're, this is called commonalities, and first we're going to look around the room and... Let's see, is there something that all of us have in common that you're aware of right now? You got one? Yeah. <laughs> we're, all wearing, we're all wearing the same t-shirt. We're all wearing the same t-shirt. So is there anything else that we all have in common that you can notice maybe that's, that's obvious besides the green t-shirt? That was, that was, that's pretty obvious. Oh. That was a good one. <laughs> We're all human beings. We're all human beings. Okay, so uh, that's that's fun for kids to look at. What do we have? What do we have in common? And they may stop at that point. So, what else do I have in common? They might think, well, there's no way I have anything in common with this person. I don't even like them. So, uh, what we do is we pair up, or you could triple up, but I like pairing up. And you're going to ask the group to find, uh, the pairs, to find three things that they have in common with the person they're paired up with that are not obvious. So the green shirt would not be acceptable. That's obvious. So it's requiring them to ask some questions, search around, and find out what they have in common. So we could do maybe, just for fun, just do one, uh, do one real quick if we have, um, if you want to just ask the person next to you, try to find out something that you have in common. So t we have two, 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 and two. Just take a minute to do that. Hi. Hi. Uh, so are you a native New Yorker? No. No. OK. Is a question? Us. Now you got a question for me? Do you like to read? <laughs> I love to read. There we go. Right. Ding, ding, ding. Got one. OK, so we have these two. How many things? I said one okay. for time. I usually do three. We both like to sing very loudly when we are home alone. 
You both like to sing loudly when you're home alone. She likes I, to sing. You, and you'd, <laughs> you'd never know, and you'd never know that, but without asking questions. Okay, this group, the pair. We both live in Harlem. Okay, and then we have this group of this pair over here. We both like to read. Okay, and last group, last pair. We both live on 80th Street. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're all <laughs> they're married. Now to each other, or to okay. <laughs> so you have that in common. That will be rare. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was a good point. Okay, I hope, I hope you have more than that in common. So that's, so that's just a little exercise giving people a chance to find out something that they may have in common with someone they might have thought they really didn't have anything in common with. It's a little bit of a uh, breaking down of the barriers. I use that one as an icebreaker. Another one that uh, I like to use for um, just having to respect people's differences, this is called pick a corner. But since this group is small, and I'm going to give you two options to use it, you can pick a corner, which would be you'd have people in four corners, or we could just div uh, divide in half. So you guys can stand up for this one. And thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing before. All right, so um, if you love broccoli, I'm going to have you get on, um, move over to this side of the room. If you're already there, you stay there. If you love broccoli. Wow. Okay. All right. If you're Italian, I want you to go to this side. That's so cute. No Italians. Okay. All right. If you uh, can ride a two wheel bike, I want you to go over to this side. Okay. If you like to cook, you can go over to this side. Okay. If you were born in New York City, you can go over to this side. Native New Yorkers? That's it. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, I need one more. If you have lived in more than one borough in New York City, go over to this side. Okay, and since we have out-of-town audience, I'll do a less regional question. If you've, um, let's see, if you've uh, climbed a mountain using a harness, go over to this side. Okay, so you guys did, okay. All right, so those are just, those you can do five, five things, you can do 10 things, you can do 15 things. You, don't, you never let any activity go on too long that people now start to hate it. So maybe 10 would be about uh, a, a good amount. So, and you can ask the kids some questions too. So what did it feel like to be the only person who didn't like broccoli? Very confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she was yes. confused because she, was kind of surprised that so many people liked broccoli. I wonder, and, and uh, well, also, I wonder if that would be a little bit different with the, with the kids. Maybe if you said, uh, if I hate ice cream and there was one kid, it would be a little bit different. So you can ask people, what did it feel like to be part of this group? Um, did you choose to be a member of this group? Did you, do you like being a member of this group? You know, group being a, a liberal term to describe like the, the group of people that don't like broccoli or the group of people that do like broccoli. So that's called pick a corner, and that's just kind of giving kids a chance to see that we have differences, but that's OK. We can still get along. And then also still learning about each other, learning what people like, learning what people don't like in sort of a non-threatening way. And whatever your comfort level is with throwing out different um, things that are a little bit more sensitive, like I said, oh, are there any, you know, there's anyone Italian? You could, you can use other, you know, terminologies if you think that the group wants to, uh, you know, explore some other things like where people are from and cultures. And we're going to get a little bit into um, the cultures with uh, the next activity, which is called Tiny Teach.